You remember that next door neighbor of mine? Wait, what? Against my neighbor. Who are these people? Get the door, get the door, get the door. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Look at that. Hey guys, welcome back to the Next Generation Podcast. I'm your host, Oscar. And in front of me is our co-host and my wife, Elma. Hi. And um, as you can see, we have a different setup today. And let us know if you guys like it. Uh, we are very fond of it already. I, I like the whole intro stuff. I, I don't know. I think it's cool. But uh, nonetheless, we do have an awesome episode for you guys today. Uh, a lot of cool stories. And we do have a little bit of an announcement to make. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably already saw this. Um, even like our own little YouTube community host stuff here. But we actually opened up um, a little form for you guys to submit stories or videos or audio, whatever you want. Uh, and if, um, you know, if you get lucky, we might choose you. So we can actually read a few stories of you guys and give out our unsolicited advice. See if we can help with that. But for today, we have an awesome episode, like I mentioned earlier. And um, a lot of cool, interesting stories. Do you want to go ahead and just jump into it? Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and actually play the first story here. Am I the equal for denying an older woman shelter from a storm? I, 23 female, am an avid hiker in Australia. Last week, I encountered a middle-aged woman around 50 years old as I was coming off a trail. She was walking in my direction as I came out of the bush. It was strange to see her. The sun was almost down, and the weather was starting to turn. Also, this was an intermediate collection of trails at best. Difficult even for me at worst. And she didn't look super athletic. Point is, my weird radar was going off already. She walked up to me and stopped, standing too close for my comfort, gestured toward the clearing where my car was parked, and asked whether it was my car. No greeting or anything. When I looked over, something made me uncomfortable. There were no cars other than mine in sight. The trail I was on isn't crazy far from civilization, but it's not a walk away. One of those highway rest stops that's there for the trail and a few parking spots. No way she could have gotten there without driving. I let her know that, yes, it was my car. To which she responded something like, perfect. There's a store coming. I can't be caught in it. I need to get home. She was very matter of fact. It seemed like she had already decided what would happen. Without waiting for my response, she started striding for my car. I am glad I always locked my doors because she would have hopped right in the passenger seat had the door opened. As she was walking over to it, I went after her trying to explain that I wasn't sure it was a good idea for her to hitch a ride, asking why she was out here in the first place. I was talking to a brick wall until she realized that car was locked, at which point she turned around with this look of anger and frustration on her face. She starts ranting the same stuff as before. I need to get home. A storm is coming. I cannot be caught in it. Why don't you get it? I was very confused at this point and a little scared as this woman was now a barrier between me and my vehicle. I told her something like, I'm sorry, but I don't feel comfortable with having a stranger in my car. She stared me down for a few seconds, I guess trying to gauge her chances at asking again. And just like that, the anger drops from her face and she's silent. I was really uncomfortable. I asked if I could call someone. If there was any other way to help, she starts walking towards me, scary, but then right past me. I'm still asking her questions, then just saying things like, hello, and excuse me, no response. She walked to the other end of the rest stop and maintained eye contact with me as she sat down on a log, then just stared at nothing. I didn't follow her. I got into my car, really shaken up, and drove away. As soon as I was back in cell range, I called the fire and rescue, they said they would send someone out. I was scared for my safety in the moment, but she was just some woman alone in the middle of nowhere. Am I the a for refusing this strange woman a ride slash shelter in my car? Okay. Before getting into the story, yeah. two things. Okay. One, yeah. I love your expressions. Like, this isn't you who already put Reddit. You're like, hmm. Now, interesting uh, great honestly, actor <laughs> 10 out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> well the best part about this whole thing is uh, like as we keep building more and more episodes i i read so many stories yeah i read so many that like they all get kind of like saturated is it is that the correct word no uh well they all like it's kind of hard to remember them mm-hmm. like specifically um uh, so these stories i'm not gonna lie i already kind of forgot them like i don't oh, okay. i don't know them by memory so yeah. like some of these are like oh, oh what and you get to just listen to it yeah it's nicer because i don't have to actually be reading so i can actually pay attention more 
Okay. And um, and get to thinking. Then I yeah. gave your acting too much credit. It was in real acting. Oh. Um, and number two, mm-hmm. the way that you read it reminded me of like creepy co- pasta. Oh yeah, that's kind of <laughs> yeah. what I was going for. <laughs> Only for this one though, because like yeah, this one stories. was a little bit weird. Yeah, isn't it? That's, I don't blame spooky. OP for not letting this lady in the car. Yeah. No, honestly, okay. I don't know if this is like some sort of like childhood trauma or whatever it is maybe goosebumps or something that caused this um not and goosebumps that i mean like actual goosebumps, like the book and, yeah. and the i'm more so talking about like uh the series i don't know if you remember the goosebumps series yes, I remember. but oh my god those were freaking terrifying as a kid but um anytime we go hiking i have like a really bad feeling like anytime i've gone hiking with like either you or friends I always feel some sort of weirdness. I don't know if that's like something that is relatable, like if, if you guys can relate to this, but like I always feel like a little sense of like, is somebody watching me? That's weird. I feel yeah. like I've never caught that from you while hiking. You know what it is though? It's not like a I'm like paranoid kind of thing. It's more like a very subtle like like a, like in the back of my brain or yeah. back of my head, I'm like, is somebody watching me right now? Like is somebody out there? Like I don't know. I, I to me, I don't know what it is, but the wilderness kind of like freaks exposed? me out. Maybe. And maybe because I lose. Okay, well, also, I've gone on hikes where I lose complete cell, cell phone signal or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like most. If it's a good most, hike. Right? It's, it's a good hike. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, right. Um, uh, And like, I think maybe it's like a fear of like not being able to contact anybody. Mm. or And also that I don't have any like, it's not like I'm going to bring anything with me. It's just like maybe a backpack with water, yeah, and that's it. Like that, that's all, you know. So like, like, scary things can happen out there, bro. Like I don't know what's gonna happen. We haven't gone on like extravagant hikes. Not you and I, no. No, I've gone with hiking with friends before. Okay, like when I was with my running running team. Oh uh, yeah, I used to go like on a pretty like long long hikes. I think you got lost once running. Yes, um, I did, dude. Yes, I did. <laughs> maybe that's, that's scary. Where it comes from. No, it, it, it happened before that. Like, I've, I've always just had it, even since I was younger. It's weird. I don't, I don't know. Okay, Hikes well, are iffy. For the story, yeah. Um, I don't like how this lady approached with so much um, entitlement. Yeah, like demanding. Yeah, yeah. didn't say hello, dis- didn't introduce herself, didn't say, yeah. can I have a ride? You know, it was like a matter of fact, this is gonna this is going to happen and you have yeah. no choice. And I feel like something that I talked to you about recently was how people can see women as not a threat. Not oh, yeah, dangerous. yeah. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think both women and men can see men as a threat, but most women and wo- men don't see women as threat. Yeah. So that can be used as... Like a weapon almost. A weapon, yeah. yeah. Where you don't know what the plan of this lady is or yeah. there's a group of people and she's the bait like that's what i was thinking too but like the weird part about this whole thing to me was that like he said um i looked out and there was no other car yeah how did you get there how did she you get there like, this is what i'm saying i don't know hikes to me are also, weird i would have double checked like where did you get an alert for this storm because oh, if yeah, you live yeah. in a place where there's storms frequently, yeah. you get text messages. I mean, even if you're in a place where it gets hot, you'll get heat wave warnings, wind yeah, wave yeah. warnings. You're definitely going to get a storm warning. So I don't uh, know. She's giving me really weird vibes. Like yeah. homeless, kind of like mm. cuckoo brain vibes. Oh. That's what she's giving me. And I, I, don't, I don't know. The whole thing gives me a bad vibe because it's like, uh, where does she come from? First of all, and like as soon as if OP were to have her, like, good move on OP, by the way. Yeah. But like, if OP had her in his car, that's your responsibility. That's your, your human now. Like, yeah. you can't just like throw her off in the middle of the highway or throw yeah. her off in any street because this person, you know, like, it's weird. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I, and I don't. based on some like Uber videos I've seen, I yeah. know that most of them can be fake, but it can be hard to get people out of your car once yeah. they're in your car, you that's know? True yeah unless you put hands like what how else do you get someone out of your car push them out yeah no i think op did a great did a great move here op gave suggestions like is there anyone i can call for you and stuff like that and i would have already not done that because of how she replied and how she was communicating back don't you get it yeah get out of here but before that i think my approach would if she had been a normal human being and asked hey (laughs) 
there's there's a storm coming yeah. and i don't have a way to get back home do you mind giving me a ride i live here and he, yeah. so and so i would have in that case been i don't feel comfortable with that but is there an uber you can call and i can wait here with you yeah. until it arrives or something like that and a feature in your car your keys that most cars have i think is if you press the unlock button once it will only unlock the driver uh, yeah. and then you have to press it twice to unlock that's the, other the kind ones. of stuff i never really thought about until like we got a car together and stuff and you're like oh yeah this is like regular protocol for women yeah. <laughs> and i'm like what i mean i didn't know this what the heck yeah this whole programmable thing whatever yeah Crazy. um i also programmed the car so that yeah if did. the car goes into park it un- it locks all the doors yeah yeah it's a little annoyance but in the overall scheme of things i'm like it's it's probably better for our safety and stuff yeah. like that yeah. yeah i mean i recently saw a video of a girl that ran some errands i think at target mm-hmm. and she is missing dang really because on her way to the car like the surveillance shows that she went into target and right after she parked another car parked and right after she got in a guy got in and then you can see that when she leaves yeah. or throughout the story he's kind of following her and then when she leaves he leaves and then you can see that he pushes her into her own car yeah and then the car is found later dang yeah yeah no i mean honestly like that's the kind of weird stuff that happens like um I, I recently saw in the news too uh that there was like um and this is recent by the way like within the last three weeks uh there was like an inmate that escaped from prison oh and where do you think they found him in a hiking trail oh yeah that's where people run uh, to dude no bro don't let anybody don't let a stranger in i mean like especially because you don't know where they're coming from you don't know what kind of harm they can do you don't know anything yeah. like that and like oh no nah, dude i don't i don't i love hikes i love hikes with all my heart but hiking hikes are just iffy dude like i don't i mean where give do me the people, huge EVs. where do people go to get rid of a body bro in the middle know? of the desert and stuff <laughs> and like that in hikes. There. yeah <laughs> so it's easy yeah yeah um uh, but here let me go ahead and talk, throw a top comment because yeah. i actually have a few videos that i wanted to go ahead and show you here oh. for these yeah but uh top comment here is not the a-hole you called for assistance for her as soon as you were able good was there a storm coming? It would be an indicator if the woman was more or less stable mentally. And then, um, uh, oh, they actually said, I can tell her attitude rattled you. You don't owe some random demanding woman a ride ever. But was his storm coming? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, I actually was thinking about that too. Because I'm like, I don't know. Like, how, how was this lady able to tell? Um, but OP did reply saying like, hey, thanks for your reply. A mild storm, buddy storm nonetheless. On my way back, a light rain started up with some fair wind. So I guess there was a storm. I don't know if I would consider it a storm. More like a, a drizzle, maybe. But like, the yeah. lady knew. The lady knew. I wonder where she went, though. What is a storm? Is it just the combination of rain and wind? I think so. But like, I, I think it has to be like a certain level of intensity before you consider it a storm, you know? Okay. But she knew. Like, she somehow knew. I don't know. She's so weird. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then somebody else also, just another comment here. It's not that whole, of course. In my country, women are sometimes the bait. Or traps mm-hmm. like this someone could have been hiding and waiting for you to open your car so they can steal it also you called services to pick her up i think you went above and beyond yeah yeah and stealing it stealing your car is the least of my concerns you know yeah no they, they could have shanked you, you yeah. that you could have woken up with like a kidney missing you know like yeah, uh, yeah stolen been cars is the probably like the best outcome in this scenario yeah. to be honest uh but yeah no i was telling you earlier how about like i have the heebie-jeebies about like um uh, hiking and stuff yeah. and I, I actually found some videos here that i want to show you because i'm like dude this is exactly why i have heebie-jeebies <laughs> and honestly the reason why i'm even popping these up here is because the first time that i actually read this story um i actually found out there was like a news a little article thing like mm-hmm. um that that wrote about this now that news article thing doesn't matter okay but what does matter was the rabbit hole that I went into after that <laughs> news article. Because I'm like, how many, like, how often does this happen that people are just making news articles about it? Yeah. And that led me to something called the Appalachian Trail. Oh, okay. Have you heard of that before? No. Okay. So this is why I'm so giddy. But like, okay, the Appalachian Trail is like this place. It's a hike. It's a hike. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, in the Appalachians. I don't know yeah. where that's at. <laughs> But basically, this place is, like, this really weird trail that, like, has, like, abnormalities abnormalities happening all the time. 
like people seeing ghosts people hearing voices uh people get lost and never get found again um uh, and then there's like it's been told that there's like cults up there and stuff mm-hmm. and they just we, like uh humans that are not like socialized or whatever like, like okay like just weird weird stuff happening in that trail okay and and before we go any further i i wanted to just kind of like give you a little bit of a, a rundown of somebody who kind of explains what it is okay. and, and more so like just the rules because this is like a known thing by everybody okay, okay. so this is the first video that i wanted to play up for you you hear your name you turn yeah. around um and they also say you oftentimes will see it like slip behind a tree Ooh. so it's also called yeah. a look behind so it's like yeah. you just see the edge of it slipping behind a tree but the concept being if you pause if you stop if you turn you give it the opportunity to attack because mm-hmm. that's what it's really doing it's trying to slow you down it's trying to bring you closer so you know uh and i've seen scary interpretations of this this being this creature it's like a shadowy thing that follows you around and uh, and it, it it inhabits the Appalachian wilderness. Uh, and I want to say that most people who live along the wilderness know the rules. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Don't turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go towards it. You know, uh, if you if, if you heard your name, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Dude, I like, love that. If you heard your name, you didn't. Dude, there's so many articles and people saying like, if you heard your name, don't turn around. If if you don't whistle because they'll come after you, like there's just is all with the this. people that know this and choose to go on this trail, dude. I don't know, <laughs> yo. I'm telling you, I don't know why they do that. I was I was staying away from that trail. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the first story comes up, I'm out. Yeah. I'm not even gonna go there. What the are you talking about? There is this other video here that I wanted to show up that I was like, man, this is exactly why I get terrified of hikes too. Because like, not only this weird stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is i don't fuck with that to be honest but do you remember how um uh, i went to go hike or not hike but i went to go run with like my, my running team mm-hmm. or whatever um uh, and i got lost yeah. dude i those moments of getting lost was so like weird like like because okay one thing is like kind of a little bit knowing your way and then another another thing is you have no idea where you're at and when you're, I went to Mammoth, by the way, for everybody that wants to search it up up there. But like, um, uh, is it like a lot of trees? Dude, a lot of trees. So it's easy to lose. Completely. And it's in mountains. Yeah. And you know what else? No cell phone service. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so we went on a run, blah, blah. And at one point, since we were like the faster group, we separated it and we were, we were supposed to lead a pack. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but the fortunate Horrible things, leaders. the fortunate <laughs> things about the ones, the people who are slower is that like, they got to run with like the coaches mm-hmm. so the coaches knew the trail but the ones that were faster which was you know us group of like i think it was four um uh, we got lost up there eventually we were like dude we're on the like 11th mile we were supposed <laughs> to finish by now like what the heck is going on and we were like dude so we stopped for a second we we're like i don't know where we we're supposed to go so we ran up the mountain didn't find anything we ran down the mountain dude we were like at 16 miles of running at this point like we were trained for it so that's awesome but like we were running for so long um eventually one of us spotted like this electric pole mm. like in the sky that not, not in the sky yeah. but like you know on top of the trees and we're like oh we can just follow the, the electric pole and see where it leads so we went to the we ran and ran ran to electric pole and eventually the electric pole ran to a road and then from mm-hmm. that road we just followed the road all the way down until we saw like a campsite of like where we put our vans and stuff like that so by the end of it we had to run like 18 miles that day <laughs> and i'm like dude that's so scary but that's fortunate because we had the endurance and we had all that yeah and then it was daytime so it was daytime half nightfall yeah no no that gets scary bro and you listen and you just there's like noises up there that are a little bit weird or people like a, forget what the wilderness is dude, because people yeah. don't encounter it on a day-to-day basis yeah. or at least people in the what dude, is this rural suburbs i, I don't yeah, even remember yeah. which one's which um we're nothing compared to the and we wilderness. forget that yeah. there's so many animals out there yeah 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 there is a story here that also has to do with the appalachian trail mm-hmm. um uh, but this one's like more of a test story but this is honestly what could happen uh to people out there so just be careful when you hike and stuff you know this is the most disturbing photo in appalachian trail history just hours after this photo was taken geraldine larke got lost off of the appalachian trail Shortly she's the one stuck in the storm 
Jason's the one that still asking for the store. <laughs> like, don't you get on and get out of here. No, but this is actually going to turn a little okay. bit sad. So I'm so sorry for all the jokes in the up front, you know? Her uh -oh. husband, George, in some trouble, got off the trail to go to BR, now lost XOX. Cell coverage is not very good in the deep main wilderness, and that mm. text message never went through. She decided to set up camp and wait for rescue. Geraldine Largay waited in this campsite for 26 days. She kept a journal during her time waiting. She wrote, yeah. when you find my body, please call my husband, George, and my daughter, Carrie. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead and where you found me no matter how many years from now hikers were only left to speculate about what happened to her and what caused her disappearance that is until october 14th 2015 geraldine largate was found less than two miles away from the appalachian trail mm. she was found less than two miles yeah she was like right there how many years apart i don't like, remember her, i think it would have been three or like two oh. or three but Man, you know what the Did thing is? Did people look for her? That's what I was like, you're gonna say, like, how do you not find her? Like, there no, has to be like a rescue hard. team. Yeah, but if it's such a large yeah. area, and then if you yeah. have helicopters, the trees cover it. I just yeah. think it's so sad too, because like, get going out there in a hike, dude, everything just starts to look the same after a little while. Also, okay, she was in her coming site for 26 days, right? Yeah. I think I would set up camp every night and keep walking every day she looked like she was on the older uh, old younger old younger older side though yeah. so it was it's probably harder for her yeah but, but yeah think about it it's like okay day one day two day three yeah. um no one's coming for me I don't let know. me like let me go out and yeah even stuff. if it's like little by little every day like if she walked half a mile yeah i mean given it would have to be in the right direction what i would have done if i was her I would have tried to like get branches and stuff and like wherever I walk to put like place them down on the on the mm. ground. So that way I have kind of like a trail. Uh but you were tell the next story here? Yeah. Alright, next story. Let me go ahead and play it out for you guys here. Am I the equal for kicking my friend out for the comments he made about my girlfriend while drunk? So I'm a twenty one male, my girlfriend Ella, twenty one female, and I have been together for five years and recently bought a place they moved in together. I have a few friends who are around the same age as me, but the one mentioned in the Dang, real quick. They're 21 years old and they bought a place together. That's wow. crazy. Good for them. That's that's insane. Okay, I want to listen to the story. All right, let's go. Ahead, go ahead. Tied well, we'll call him Caleb, 21 male. Last night, we had a housewarming party and I invited a few friends over. I had invited Caleb and two other friends that I knew from high school and Ella invited a few work friends. Of course, some drinks were had, but none of us except for Caleb drank more than one or two beers. After the night progressed, Caleb started making comments about Ella and her looks. I admit she is a very pretty woman and always has been. Caleb started commenting on her clothing when she wasn't wearing anything revealing. Just a skirt that was just above her knees and a long-sleeved sweater. He started asking things like how I managed to score someone like her. I told him to cut it out and he seemed to do so for a while. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but the way Ella and I met as kids was because of behavioral problems after her mother passed. She said that I was the first person who willingly decided to be around her since it happened. So I don't know if I see it as scoring. About an hour later, Caleb's comments about Ella started up again. He was talking about how short she was, but then started commenting on her body. I quietly snapped at him to stop, and even the other guys were telling him that it's going too far. It seemed that Ella heard his comments because she went upstairs and changed into longer pants. Her sweater was pretty long already. When she came downstairs, I was pissed. Caleb had made her so uncomfortable in her own house that she felt like she needed to change. I kicked him out of our house. His girlfriend came to pick him up and the party didn't last much longer. Ella later came to me and apologized for the trouble she caused and how she was dressed. And I told her that neither her or her clothes were the problem. It was Caleb's sick comments. The next morning, Caleb's girlfriend called me asking what happened. And after explaining, she was horrified. Caleb had told her that Ella was coming onto him and I got mad. Caleb later told me I was an a-hole for telling his girlfriend and kicking him out, since apparently his girlfriend is rethinking their relationship. The guys are on my side, but a few of Caleb's family members are telling me that I should get Ella and her slutty clothing into check. I don't know if I'm an a-hole for doing what I did, but with so many people calling me one, I decided to take it up to you guys. Am I the a-hole? Okay. Am I, I the a-hole? No. If anything, he should have acted 
faster Dude, in kicking me out. I don't know how this guy kept his cool. I feel like Imagine, I would have gotten so, so mad. Disrespectful. Yeah, heck, bro. Okay. Oh my god, this guy gets me so mad, bro. <laughs> oh, okay, he gets me so mad because like you don't you don't talk about my woman like that. Like, okay, one thing is like saying like I can't believe you scored her, right? That's cool, whatever. That's, that's still weird. It's a little weird, but okay. But then like she we're all friends. Yeah, that's weird. That's that is a little weird. But like, let's say he then start talking about like the way you're dressed and stuff like that, and like how you look. I'm like, dude. Like, you stop that or I'm going to make you stop. Like, no, you can't be doing that. Like, that's yeah. so disrespectful. That's so messed up. Like, no. And no amount of, like, drinks, you know, is okay with that. You know? I also, I don't know if it's a, a, a me thing, but I also okay. feel uncomfortable with just people commenting on my appearance. Mm. But, um, Like, I think people saying, oh, you look nice. Yeah. Is it okay compliment, I guess? Yeah. But I just... I don't know. I just have a huge family and I have uh, my uncle's uncle. I don't know. You know, just yeah. a huge family. And I've just been around in situations where older men or even women in the family will be like, oh, you're so pretty. Or I don't know. It just makes me uncomfortable. Mm, like, might be you thing. I'm not going to lie. It's, just when it, it's, it's like. I can definitely, I th- I definitely see it. When it's coming from like a a weirdo, like in a weird place, I, I think that's and, when it's. And a I guess like the issue that I have is with it's still family, but yeah. it's like those far off removed yeah, family, yeah. like my mom's uncle. Is they like might as well I be did. strangers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's when you have a huge family gathering, and I, I don't know. Sometimes they, they just feel weird, yeah, you know, I and agree. it makes you feel weird about what you're wearing, and it's like you might be wearing something totally fine. Yeah, I mean, in this case, she was. She was already wearing, like, a long sleeve sweater. Maybe just, like, I don't know what it was, a skirt, I think it was. Or, or I think it was a skirt. Um, A, a, a long sleeve sweater is by no means, like, a sexy thing to wear. Or, like, a, a, a I don't revealing, know, a dressed up or yeah. revealing kind of thing. It's Or, in this way, yeah, like, not at all. And yeah. then this guy is, like, making comments, like, no, that's, that's weird. Yeah, I just been like, hey, you look nice today. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like and not, then he tells you to stop, and you keep going at yeah. it. No, either this guy, I don't know. He sounds like a real piece of work because, like, he yeah, told he, his girlfriend, "Oh, it's because she was yeah. coming on to me." No, you don't. Okay, he's a liar. Yeah, and he's also apparently can't like. He's not a friend. His, oh yeah, heck no! I mean, he can't hold his alcohol either, or whatever. Because I don't know. I don't even. I can't even blame it on the alcohol. I think he's just like a really weird person, like almost kind yeah. of perverted. I don't know, just weird. He's giving me bad vibes um uh, that's not your friend anymore mm-hmm. I, I say cut cut yeah snip snip um get rid of him yeah there's no need to keep people like that like there was i feel like i don't know maybe this sounds weird but like i feel like friends are there for you right and you, it's cool but i feel like your friends provide value in a way and whether whatever it is value it is like whether they i don't know make you happy when you're around them or um they provide support or whatever it is right mm-hmm. maybe you just like him whatever it is um as soon as a friend no longer serves I, you not necessarily serves you but like the value is not equivalent to what they're taking away from you then like that's not worth it anymore in my opinion and i feel like this guy's like bringing really really bad vibes where yeah. i'm like the value of whatever he is for you is not equivalent to whatever he's taking away I was it, it sounds like weird to talk about friendships like that. <laughs> but I get what you mean. Maybe. Yeah. It's just people in general in your life, they're there for a reason and it needs to be for a positive one. And it doesn't exactly. mean that they're always like if they're having a bad day and they want to vent to you, that doesn't mean that, oh, they're negative. No. It's just no. overall, are they bringing positive exactly. energy, pos- just positivity into your life? And if they're draining, or making you feel uncomfortable and stuff like that. They're negatives. That's in a your negative. Life. Yeah, exactly. And if you're having more negatives than positives, or really strong negatives, then that's yeah. a relationship you need to cut. Yeah, I'm happy that he did um, stand up for her though. Like in the sense where she was like, "I'm so sorry that I ruined the party for you guys." And he was like, "No, you didn't ruin the party." Yeah. Like she didn't even <laughs> say anything. The fact that she's like, "Okay, let me let me just go change," and because I yeah. feel uncomfortable in my own home. That's really cool of her she should have stood up for herself a little bit but it shows that she didn't want to 
like cause harm or cause any yeah. like, disturbance and Make stuff. other people feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I honestly, as Caleb's girlfriend, I, I if I was her, I him. would also yeah. I'm yeah. like no, there's that's almost like emotional ish cheating almost. Like you're the way you're thinking about her like that. I don't know. That's I mean, some sort of like even, bad. Like, what are you thinking? Because what you're yeah. already saying. Whatever, uh, whatever he did is not. It's not cool in a relationship. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, but um, top coming here is not the a hole, and also over already not the a hole. Obviously, Caleb is a giant a hole. But for me, the worst bit in this whole shit show is this: a few of Caleb's family members are telling me that I should get Ella and her mm -hmm. slutty clothing in check. She was asking for it. Ugh, the misogyny, misogyny is real uh yeah i mean if caleb's caleb is like the way he Why is and his family is probably to you also yeah. maybe they're like really close friends somehow like family friends i don't know i don't know that's weird yeah like imagine your best friend's mom calling you being I, like how could you yeah. do this no i don't think i i, I could never see her doing that and like, you guys are close you know yeah yeah so. yeah, yeah um somebody else commented not that equal not that equal not the a-hole absolutely disgusting behavior from caleb good on you for defending ella neither of you are in the wrong here caleb has shown his true colors and is never going to change it's time to cut him out of your life i don't know if he's never going to change but yeah it's time to cut him out i would have got no yeah. contact on this homie for for quite a while to be mm -hmm. honest um uh, but yeah i feel like this is a pretty straightforward right just mm, you don't want people like that in your life yeah you know? um uh next story mm -hmm. all right here it is Am I the equal for lying to my fiancé about how my first divorce really went down? I, 34 female, have been with my fiancé, 40 male, for six years now. He proposed a year ago, and we were looking at a small October wedding. Before, I was with my fiancé from 21 to 26. I was married to my ex-husband, 34 male. Those were some of the happiest and worst years of my life. My ex was the most attractive guy I have ever met, and even now, he looks like a 24-year-old instead of an almost 35-year-old. However, we were stuck in dead-end jobs because we were both high school dropouts living in Alabama. We were creatives who wanted to save money to move to New York or L.A., but never had any money. We both worked in service positions, but I felt that most of the people who walked in the doors were just idiots. I grew to hate serving them, and this reflected in the tips and performance reviews I got. Meanwhile, my ex would get mad at me for not showing up to work and saying the people I served deserved basic respect for me. I ended up quitting my job and my ex made me take the job at the hotel where he worked. And I got more depressed because I felt like life was just passing me by. And my ex expected us to accept our life was just going to be about work. We got into more fights about how he had to convince the manager to not fire me. Finally, I got so depressed that I started talking to a friend of mine who was a nightclub dancer in Atlanta. I took a train there and tried out. I was ashamed to tell my husband that I was doing this behind his back and didn't want to face his anger over me quitting the job he got me. So one day, I just packed up and left. My ex filed for divorce and listed abandonment as the cause. We only had $2,000 in assets. To settle the divorce, my ex mailed me a check for $900, assumed our credit card debts, and that was that. He has never contacted me again, so I assumed he was not hurt. I eventually became a hospital receptionist and met my now fiancé, who is a radiologist. I told him about being divorced once but said that we grew apart and then sat down and amicably worked out a divorce. My fiancé replied it was a mature decision that spoke well to my character. I thought that the omission of detail was far from evil. I was not unfaithful or abusive. However, in the midst of announcing our engagement, a friend of my ex resurfaced and he was able to contact my fiancé without my acknowledgement. From there, my fiancé dug up information about my divorce, including the fact I was accused of abandonment by my ex. He even talked to former friends of mine. He finally confronted me and said that I lied about how I ended things with my ex and called me cold. He said that this gave him cold feet about who he was marrying and that he wanted to postpone the wedding indefinitely. I am heartbroken. He is now staying somewhere else and says he needs time to think. We had an argument where I was angry he invaded my privacy about something that happened a decade ago. I have been supportive of his career and stuck around for six years waiting for him to be ready to commit. Am I the ajo? I hate the fact that Alabama divorces are public record <laughs> and he's using that to defend his actions. All right. Like, you just hate that because it's going bad on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that murder is punishable. <laughs> ah, <shoot. laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. 
this person has an issue with lying yeah there yeah. was lying with the first husband there's lying with your fiance that's an issue yeah. that she has that she needs to work on oh man i don't know if you can i don't know how you can fix this though like i feel like you i don't know in a weird way seeing it from the the fiance's standpoint it almost makes you feel like you don't even know your fiance you don't know does this woman it, like i feel like when you does. first start dating mm -hmm. our past relationships come up oh yeah i was married previously and it was yeah. an amicable blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. divorce right and then like six years later um you somehow found out and like, hey oh, no, no. it's not you somehow found out somebody reached okay, out well someone reached out and told you okay. why would they reach out in, that's that man, you need yeah, a life yeah. right yeah I'd be like, hey, this was six years ago. I did not feel comfortable telling you who I just met, who I was interested in, like, in detail about my yeah. previous relationship. Yeah. If you had asked yeah. me later, at a later time about it, and mm -hmm. I lied then. I mean, she's probably been lying this whole time, hoping that she'd take it to the grave, to I be mean, honest. I mean, how often has this been brought up? It's weird. Mm. We don't really talk about our past relationships like that. We don't talk about it, but it's it's also not like a, a a no land topic like we've talked about it like through our whole relationship was which, is, which mm -hmm. is six years it's probably come up like maybe five times probably probably five times mm -hmm. um and not in great detail but mm -hmm. but it's come up and imagine every single time i told you the same it's thing. a lie yeah of like yeah. let's say you know whatever like this just mm. feels weird she's lying and then the fiance is yeah. doing all this research <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah i feel like if someone came up to me about you i would tell you yeah but that's a dangerous road just because in bad relationships yeah. in the relationships where they're completely lying to you um they could be lying to you about like, yeah. their name everything, their, everything Identity, and someone yeah. brings it up to you and then you bring it up to the person that's lying to you yeah bro there was um uh there, there was like what was it yeah so there was like another another also thing where like there was a guy who um uh he was doing like some drugs or whatever like like drug drug selling or whatever like all that yeah whatever Not, nothing crazy but like i think he was selling like drugs and stuff and then um he was taken to court and then uh, in the middle of the court he was like hey i'm gonna like go whatever like uh, go use the restroom or something mm -hmm. and he dipped down he left oh. he completely they, they finished the jury without him but he left like completely they can't then, finish without wait yeah they the guy being accused he's being yeah he's being like whatever it is i don't know much about law or whatever okay. like he was like he wasn't already captured and, and like he wasn't already whatever he was like going to jury or whatever all that stuff yeah and so <laughs> i yeah. don't think that this sounds right if you're the plaintiff or whatever <laughs> that's a word in law <laughs> i don't know what you're saying if you're the guy that like the case is about okay the one who's being accused of something yeah. and then you're there and you're like your honor i need to go number one they're like oh, yeah oh, i we'll figured it out i figured it out you. i actually figured it out let's jump back because i know you're completely right i figured it out okay right. i um, guess uh i know you guys are kind of debating <laughs> whether i killed those five women <laughs> may i please use the restroom while you guys continue what you're doing okay no no no. i figured it out it wasn't it wasn't the he just was like let me go use the restroom no it was a break they, they went into a break okay you know there's those yeah, things okay, right yeah, yeah, law yeah. break okay there was there was a law break break that's what they're called yeah. yeah one of those that's a very illegal term for it there was a break and then he just dipped town um uh, and then he was gone and they they found him 16 years later oh. living a whole new life new identity new family all this Dang. stuff 16 years later yeah and and for this person like the family probably didn't know i mean oh, if they did that's a ride or die kind of family but like a, like kids wife and I, stuff? I, I, I don't know his previously life but i know that new life he did have okay, kids okay, that's what family. i was getting at so yeah. imagine being a woman married to a guy for how many years 16 years yeah you have kids they are almost already all out the house and then yeah. someone comes to you like hey your husband's name is actually this yeah and that, mm, <laughs> okay <laughs> sure uh, dude i don't uh, i don't know it's iffy. hey flavio like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i 
I, I think it's red flags. I feel like I, I would take it as red flag. Like at least at least in the beginning, I'd be like, okay, you're telling me my wife is not <laughs> who I thought it was. Like, at least I don't know. Let me. I, I think mean, I look would it up, bring it up to you. you. I don't want to bring it up to you. And then at see all. how you respond, <laughs> and then if I don't trust you or whatever, I would buy like. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah for sure babe obviously they're lying and yeah. then you go to sleep in them you know what i would do i would um uh, i would like just when you were not paying attention like let's say you're like this was me typing and searching it up this was not me tickling you could have also just searched it up on your computer here but um <laughs> um what i would do is like whenever you're focused like you're editing an episode or something yeah um uh, i would just like pretend to say or not pretend i would say your other <gasps> name I'd be like, let's see, uh, Felicia. That's the other name, okay? Ew. I would be like, I'd be like, hey, Felicia, you want something? You'd be huh? like, what? Uh, uh, babe, you wanted something? <laughs> like, I wanted to let me know if I could catch you, on, like using your other name or something. Like, mm. let me, let me, let me get a little bit of uh, like information. Some go out this. for a walk and like hire someone or tell a friend to like hide in a bush and call out that name to see if I'm like <laughs> just in the corner, Felicia. <laughs> I Alicia. feel like honestly, I would turn whatever name it was. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've done that. I've done that a lot of times. <laughs> but I'd be like, I'll just hear like Juan, hey Juan, hey Juan, and I'd be like, I know not Juan, but like, <laughs> let me just I confirm. Would. You know, I like let me on. let me figure out what's going on here. Like maybe I am Juan. I don't know. <laughs> but it's actually happened to me before, where like I was in a bus. You know, back then when like when I was going to college and stuff, yeah. the poor days. Um, I w- I'm not poor, but just you know, not, I mean, we I were poor. My, I were pretty poor, but, you know. Um, but um, I was in the bus, and then somebody kept like calling me by the wrong name. I think they were calling me Mark. Oh. I, I did not like them, but they were like, "Hey, Mark, Mark, hey, Mark." And then they started. They were okay. Think about this. They were all the way in the back <laughs> of the bus, and I was like in the middle. They just started scooching. <laughs> they just started scooching to like the closer seats. And close and it was late it was like 11 like 12. i see that in time yeah i see the time and they were like hey mark mark hey mark and i was like don't look <laughs> my stop is almost here yeah like Heck, i'm gonna so get close. on the next stop even if it's not yeah. my stop and you know what i was like I, I guess his stop like came earlier than mine did mm. because he was at the door and he was just there he was just looking straight at me and i was like and i could see him from my peripheral he was like mark and then he just left <laughs> and i'm like dang this guy really went a lot to try and get my attention but i knew and him when he was not more you know he went to go try to find you on instagram or whatever to tell you hey i just try saw to, you yeah and he's looking for marks in his instagram <laughs> just an hour of like mark this mark that yeah, yeah no um uh, but that does that does happen to me before where someone's calling me the wrong name but yeah every now and then i'll look but this story is i don't know i think it's iffy too because like if she's done it before i think what he's scared of is that he'll do it again and depending who the person is abandonment and, yeah like, that's like that's hardcore bro yeah straight up just leaving yeah she couldn't face her like fears that's the thing is see that's kind of like a coward's way out as well like it's not like he was abusive yeah. in any way ish it, it more it more seemed like he was trying to help her get on her feet it seemed Maybe like she was kind of reckless. You can't keep a job. No, I dude. I got you a job. Yeah. You're sad. Let's figure that out. Fine. Yeah. You want our life to go somewhere? Fine. But, I mean, you do that while still working. Yeah. But I understand, on the other hand, if he was just get over it, you're going to work for the rest of your life. That's depressing. It did not seem like it was that way. It didn't. Yeah. It seemed like he was a really good, supportive guy. I mean, he even mailed her a $900 check. Like, yeah. actually i don't know where the mail went to because i don't know how you got the info but um uh, and he didn't even try contacting her abandonment to that degree imagine you're married and it's you just it's get gone. home they're gone you didn't really have like huge issues it's exactly <laughs> that's horrible and i don't know and i don't like the way she approached it she was like you never contacted me so i think he was okay with it no bitch i mean he, he was, was pretty probably, happy he was probably hurt yeah <laughs> like that's horrible but I, I do see where the guy's coming from. Imagine um, him talking to his new partners and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, tell me about your past relationships. Yeah, I was married. How did that end? Um, they just left. <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> when they came, came home, home, they weren't there. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I do understand the guy's perspective. Like, this is a very real thing to be kind of scared about i think Only i would talk to you about it like, hey well what, what was where were you in your headspace that led you to yeah. abandonment because it's also true you can just have a conversation about it and figure yeah. it out um some people don't take that approach though like the guy i have a story about that oh actually so i um, abandoned you 
you abandoned someone, someone i have been abandoned before <laughs> that's another story from the past another uh, previous episodes were like oh that one yeah my yeah. first relationship got just ghosted. Up, got, yeah just gone okay but um, that was not a bad yeah i guess we were yeah it was an eighth grade relationship you met her <laughs> once in person <laughs> i'm still very traumatized about that okay uh but no no not necessarily about that but like uh one of my exes um uh, when i was in a relationship with her mm -hmm. we were cool but then she started being like super mentally manipulative. Mm. Like she Are was you talking about me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm still in it. Trying, trying to figure out how to leave. Thinking about abandonment. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about that? I'm kidding. No, but um uh yeah, no, so she was super like mentally manipulative. Like she I think she was probably like the definition of a gaslighting. And like um uh, she was always just like trying to I don't know how to put it like almost temper tantrums mm. where like she she wouldn't she like wouldn't talk to me if we were walking together she would just ignore me like mm. stuff like that right like that's but, but there was no like cause of it like i didn't get her mad or anything like that um uh yeah i think the reason why is because i think she wanted the attention for a bit. Mm -hmm. i don't know but that's not the point i guess technically it is the point <laughs> <laughs> I, I i dumped her obviously uh -huh. um you and then, then no no i'm not this is not a story about abandonment. Oh. This is a story about people um, redoing their actions because oh, okay. she then got a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I'm talking two years later. Like, I, I don't know about her. I don't know what her relationships are or whatever, right? But two mm -hmm. years later, a guy messaged me on on um, uh, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, hey, um, do you know blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say her name. Um, uh, and then he was like, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. And then he's like, hey did you date her and i was like oh man this is gonna be like one of those weirdos whatever right mm -hmm. and i was like yeah i dated her blah blah and then he's like hey did she ever do this blah 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 and i was like oh yeah <laughs> like and he said the same things that i just said mm -hmm. like he, she started being manipulative and all that like ignoring him blah blah all that mm -hmm. stuff like those kind of like toxic traits and he was just trying to figure out like why she's doing it and and he tracked me down i don't know if he should try weird that that is weird i'm not gonna lie him doing that i was like hey man don't talk to me like i don't, I don't need this and that's what i ended up telling him after like a, a couple of messages but like mm -hmm. um that is weird of him but my point is like she didn't change yeah he just did it again with a new guy yeah. so this could have been the same situation i think that's why he's scared of that she'll do this to him yeah one day when they when a problem arises and she can't fix it here's like two cases i'm out of here yeah you know like i think that's a that's a real group case here mm -hmm. um uh, just like anything i would um also is it weird that she for let me see i'm gonna go back into this story right yeah randomly i feel like it didn't really add anything to the story but she just says my ex was the most handsome man or whatever i i, I don't know where it i is. think she was you know yeah she she said that he at 35 he still looks like a 25 year old yeah i think it's to prove the point that like she had no issues with him maybe just other than my like, ex she was, was the most attractive guy i had ever met almost like she's trying to like, like why did you need to add <laughs> that yeah. in there she's trying to like brag or something and like i could land this man i don't know um but maybe she's oh, just wait trying a to second. The point i like, missed this line too those were some of the happiest and worst years of my life okay i don't think i would refer to any time that i had with the next as my happiest <laughs> yeah you know i get you <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. my happiest moments are with you yeah the better version of everything huh yeah i i don't know this lady seems a little bit um, um cooky but um i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like say she's uh unsavable <laughs> like i i think she's okay she grew up she's waiting six yeah. years with this guy to for him to propose it seems like she's ready now she wasn't ready before she's been or waiting whatever. just she's... to abandon him once <laughs> the papers <laughs> yeah. are signed maybe huh um uh, but it seems like she's ready to commit to this guy like i don't think she'll repeat the same thing mm -hmm. um but as everything i would communicate that to him and figure out a way yeah. to do it like figure out uh, you know your husband better than anybody um talk to him and, and find the perfect way to let him know that, like hey i'm here for the long run you know like mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do this again um with whatever it is maybe tattoo his name on your hand i don't know maybe something um, like that. maybe his face on your like you know upper body i don't know mm -hmm. whatever it is maybe try something like that you know um, but top comment here is he never contacted me again so i assumed he was hurt ma'am you ghosted a whole marriage <laughs> <laughs> that is a big red flag for any partner of course it matters you lied about it and then somebody else said you're the a-hole you lied to your partner about something very significant 
Maybe you didn't hold that marriage in high regard, but to most people, marriage is not taken lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to tell your partner every detail of your past, but the fact that you told him something completely opposite of what happened and he found out from someone else makes everything you say now not at all believable. You lost his trust and you have to accept the very real possibility you probably won't get it back. Especially when yeah. he when you told him about how you amicably 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 ama, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like got a divorce and yeah. he complimented you on that and he said oh, that's that, so mature of you yeah that yeah. that says so much about your character if he mm -hmm. you are starting off with um a lie a lie yeah. a misconception yeah. and that ain't it first impression is a lie that ain't it mm -hmm. uh, something that, that he values obviously yeah and, yeah yeah that ain't good man that's coming here is you started off your relationship on a lie you broke his trust completely so yeah you're the asshole this is your karma for how you abandoned your first marriage dang even think about that yeah karma hit huh yeah it do be karma um like i said it's not a complete loss it's not a wash i would um a wash yeah that's what the cool kids refer to <sighs> like you know slang <laughs> you know? Your grandma yeah <laughs> um uh, but uh yeah yeah so it's not a complete wash oh, cool you know? kid. um uh, just uh figure out a way to to make it up to him um I, I, all he needs right now as a as a you know member of the man community is for you to back him up like give him give him um a, a reason give him give him support as to why uh he feels like he he can no longer trust you yeah like make make him believe in you again yeah Which, whatever way it is you need to do the effort to gain trust again yeah it ain't gonna be just granted back to you like some sort of like magic you know psh, psh, wand or whatever but uh yeah you ready you for sure start? that looked <laughs> okay i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> let's hop over to the next one <laughs> am i the a-hole for telling my mom she can't talk to my kid about her miscarriage and take him to the grave I, 20 female, have a son, 5 male. I was adopted and grew up the consolation prize for the miscarriage my mom, 68 female, had at 20 weeks. We had to go to this fetus's grave every year. One of my earliest memories was her forcing me to give my favorite stuffed rabbit to the grave. I grew up with her venting about how hard the miscarriage was to me, and I honestly think it was super inappropriate and it made me feel like a second option to what she actually wanted. I obviously was never good enough. I recently found out that she took my son to the fetus's grave and told him about it. I told her that's an off-limits topic and he has no business hearing about her miscarriage at five years old. Now, some people in my life are saying that I'm an a-hole for telling my mom she couldn't tell my son about his dead aunt. But I think I'm justified in not wanting him to have to hear about it too. It was literally 30 years ago. Am I the a-hole? All right, I think we probably should have given a trigger warning on this one, um, uh, just because it is regarding miscarriages. Okay. Um, trigger warning there. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, no, that's pretty fudged up. I. Uh, I can't that's a imagine. Bad grandma. I I can't imagine what you go through. Yeah, it's with tough. With a miscarriage, you know, and you need to have a support system definitely yeah but bringing your kids into that maybe it's not the best thing to do especially as kids very likely not the best thing. you know something I, I would probably stay away from that maybe when they're adults yeah. that's something that you can share with them definitely don't get don't make them give your your stuffed rabbit yeah. to the fetus is grave yeah that's weird I maybe more like if you want to do something like that, maybe be like, hey, um, as you know, I, I I did have like a baby that passed away. If you want to take one of your toys to them, I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's more healthy instead of you're at the grave. You're like, give him your rabbit or yeah. whatever. Or give her your rabbit. We had you because of, yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, no, don't also, do though, OPs, I don't know. I feel like it's a little insensitive to be keep calling it the fetus's grave. Yeah, I would refer to its name probably. If like, if the mom had given name. yeah that's true the baby but just or the auntie, baby instead of like aunt. yeah baby is probably fetus. better yeah I don't know it, maybe that's that's actually correct because like that's the more um what's called medical term for it I don't know what when but does what a fetus turn to a baby is it the same thing synonym synonym 
Okay, that's a whole uh, other debate okay. that I don't want to get into. <laughs> okay. good, good. <laughs> but my point is, if this miscarriage is a sore topic for your mom, mm-hmm. I don't think it's nice for you to call it the fetus. Yeah. You know? Like, let's say your parent passes away and you're really close to your parent and you have their ashes and everyone refers to him. Oh, those ashes? You know, like the person you would yeah. want them to to refer to. Seems almost like racist. It's ashes. It's just weird. You know, yeah. it's a little insensitive. Uh, but dude, also this is okay. You did what you did with your kids. I don't think that was right. It's, that makes the little adopted kid grow up with trauma being the replacement. Heck you yeah. know, yeah. But it's that bad. you messed up with your kid. But now this is not even your kid. This is your you know grandchild. What, you know what it is, man? You know what it is? Like, I... Okay, I don't even think this is, like, a case of, like... I guess, yes, yes, you did mess up with your kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are messing up with your grandkid. Mm-hmm. But I don't think she's messing up on purpose. I think this is, like, a medical thing. Like, I think she needs, like, therapy. She needs therapy, for sure. Because that ain't normal. That's you don't trauma. do that. That's a lot of trauma that she's, like, holding on to, trying to, like... For 30 put years. Put it on kids. Yeah, that's a long... Yeah. 30 years. That's trauma that she hasn't been able to get over that she's like looping. Just mm-hmm. keep looping. And she's like trying to I don't know if like this is like the uh, any sort of medical sense or whatever or psychological sense, but I feel like she's trying to almost fix it by telling other people and making know. them like I'm not acknowledge a it. <laughs> I'm not a therapist either, but I I feel like I, I know all this stuff, you know? I just know it. Uh but no, no, I, I feel like she's trying to um uh, like make other people acknowledge it almost in a way so that she can keep it alive does that make sense it feels like she hasn't moved past it yeah. and by that i don't mean that something that oh they're no longer hurt by this that's something that you're forever going to remember but there you move past yeah you know yeah. yeah i don't know that's weird especially if this kid hasn't been taught about death that's a conversation your parents should have with you, not randomly yeah. by your grandma Just telling you about taking you yeah. to a grave and telling you about a baby that never got to be. Yeah, I don't think that's her. That's like crossing the line, like yeah. hardcore crossing the line. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what I would suggest is maybe, maybe, and this sounds so weird, honestly, but like maybe have her uh, earn the right to hang out with the kiddo again, like. Have her earn the right to to be able to be alone with him. Mm. Not per se, like, don't just take the kid away from her because that's probably going to keep hurting her and add to the trauma. But just be like, hey, like, uh, for the time being, I don't want um, whatever the kid's name is to be alone with you. Um, only with us together. And, and also in the meantime, I feel like I didn't say this in the past. And, and maybe that's my bad. But, I, but I, I really hope that we can take you to therapy and figure out a way to you know just heal Mm -hmm. not not for us but really for you like i want you to heal because yeah like she shouldn't have to be living through this through her whole life yeah that seems so miserable you know um uh, and maybe she can find peace you know like it it won't be like a a forgotten thing but like find peace with it yeah yeah Yeah. i think it also depends though on how the mom reacts once you tell her hey that is crossing boundaries yeah. i'm not okay with you talking to my child about touchy subjects like that those yeah. are subjects i want to talk with my child and i don't appreciate you to taking him to the grave without letting me know yeah. and depending how the mom responds to that hey i did not know you felt like that about me doing that i didn't i didn't think it through i apologize won't happen yeah. again yeah i think it's we have to see where she stands and in like terms of mental stability and then go from there um, is there a comment there's actually an edit and then there's a, a few top comments you want to okay. go to jump into it yeah all right edit thank you so much everyone for the support i was somewhat gaslit for my whole childhood and this thread has really helped me to see how messed up it really was that she constantly trauma dumped on me and put her grief on me during my childhood i'm definitely going to consider going low contact and if my son tells me she's brought it up again likely no contact i don't know I wouldn't go no contact. Uh, I guess, how bad is she treating you? Like, I wouldn't go no contact. This lady has been through enough. Yeah, I get it. She, like, trauma dumped on you. 
I think like, sometimes that's help. not your fault because like like talking from personal experience yeah you know um my mom moved to another country with her husband yeah and far far away from her family and was only surrounded by my dad's family and i think growing up once i was like in my teen years she felt comfortable with me telling me about stuff uh, telling me how her day went or just telling me about her struggles and at the time I thought that I'm grown. I <laughs> I can handle this and I can be yeah. there for my mom. But as a grown up, I think that I there's some things I probably shouldn't have heard. Mm. And it's not like my mom was doing it intentionally or that she was trying to harm me, but I think she just was alone. She felt yeah. alone and she just wanted someone to talk to and as her only daughter, I was the escape yeah it was, reality kind of thing yeah it was yeah. someone that she can talk to and i think that's maybe how it was with this lady you know she didn't realize that hey let me think about this maybe i shouldn't be sharing so much to my child yeah yeah and it wasn't intentional and i'm not taking away the fact that it hurt and not taking the fact that it traumatized her i'm just saying what were the, her intentions you yeah know? that's probably like the first thing you should look at what her intentions were yeah and then go from there um a top comment here was not that equal first and foremost five is a bit early to start talking about dead people he's never met second and as important you are the parent she is the grandma babysit and spoils the child but she does not get to decide when the kid is ready for different benchmarks and growing up bottom line is your child your rules if she doesn't agree she doesn't get to be along with them yeah, and then somebody else commented, not that whole everyone is entitled to grieve for a loved one, but your mom is obsessed with grieving for the baby she miscarried over 40 years ago. I was in my teens when I found out that my mother miscarried my parents' first baby and third baby. Overheard my dad say something, so I asked my mom about it. I can't imagine what it would have been like to grow up being dragged to their grave sites. If your mother is still full of sorrow, she needs grief counseling, but you are right to limit your son's exposure to her obsession. I didn't even know that was a thing. Grief counseling. Yeah, that's yeah. that's probably the, the place to go. Yeah. I thought I thought it was just therapy or whatever. It's probably, probably a good form of therapy. Been, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's probably the the place to go. Um, because that's that's tough. That's probably a place for to start and then you can you can start healing from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ready for the next story here? Yeah. All right. Am I the who for telling my fiance to drop his best friend? My fiance, Mexican twenty four, and I, black twenty one, have been together for almost two years now. We've known each other since I was a freshman in high school and reconnected back in 2020. He's had his best friend, who we'll call B, 23, Mexican, since he was a freshman in high school. My fiancé thinks of B as family because of how much stuff they went through together. Fast forward to my fiancé and I first dating. He told his friends not to use the N-word around me as it's disrespectful. Well, my fiancé introduced me to all his friends, B included, and B used the n-word profoundly in front of me knowing how i don't tolerate that my fiance at the time laughed and said i already warned him so that being my first impression of him i already don't like him fast forward to a few weeks ago my fiance was showing me something in his group chat with all of his friends i see a text from b and it says go hang out with your cotton picking wife while you eat rocks i obviously confronted my fiance about this and he got pretty defensive about it he said that he was sorry B said that about me, but tried to basically back up B, saying things like, he always says stupid stuff, he doesn't mean it. It's how we joke around. He doesn't know what's wrong to say. Mind you, B is a grown-ass man. Then my fiancé tried to defend it again by saying, he's been my brother since high school, when no one else wanted to be my friend, stuff like that. I explained to him that if my family or friends ever said something racist towards him, I'm dropping them without hesitation. He said he understood that, but he's known B longer than he's known me. My fiance said he dropped B as a friend. Only problem is that they all played together on a game called FIFA. And if my fiance were to stop talking to B, then all his other friends might drop him. Basically, my fiance won't drop him because he's scared of losing his friends. I genuinely don't know what to do in this situation. Uh, <laughs> not the FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> not the FIFA. Uh, man, no. Uh, you you need to get yourself a man. That's, that's a boy. The, the part that was funny was she said, if any of my family members 
did something like that to you, I would drop yeah. them. He's like, I understand that. But I've known him longer than I've known yeah. you. Um, she's known her family members her whole life. Yeah, yeah. What? No, but also, like, uh, a friend versus, like, a significant other. Like, the values are, you know, yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. obscured. Like, uh, just because you've known him for a couple years longer doesn't mean that, like, you know, and they're your priority. They kind of met around the same time, no? Because they, she said freshman in high school, and she, he also met the friend freshman in high school. Well, not necessarily. They they went together for almost two years. The fiance. Yeah, because they reconnected yeah. in mm, twenty twenty, yeah. but yeah. they all kind of met around the same time. And even so, that's not a many years no. for it to be a huge bonding. Friendship. It ain't. I'm like I would kind of understand if it was like. They've known each other since they were like five, like five years old, yeah, or like little kids. But like, like you no. had your best friend, you guys went in elementary, yeah, elementary, yeah. But th- this dude, you've met him in high school, like that ain't that ain't nothing crazy, you know? Yeah, I I definitely think that um, there's there's two problems here. The first overall and pretty clear problem is that like this guy is allowing um what's it called B to be racist. Yeah, like, that's the overall clear problem. But I feel like the second problem here is that your your fiance doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. And is okay with it and doesn't want to drop it. I think those are two really <laughs> major red flags. Like He just says stupid stuff. He doesn't mean it. I've told you that I'm not comfortable with him talking to me like that. Yeah. Or- it's like if like one of my friends has decided to call you like the B word. Yeah, like all the time. Like I guess there's <laughs> you can fall under two categories: bish. two bish and also the Mexican slur for with, oh <laughs> <laughs> the b word. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I, I didn't think of it either until I said. It. I was like, wait a second. I guess you <laughs> fall into two of them. If you say that you have an issue with it, and I yeah. allow them to still refer to you like that, that's that says a lot about me. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to defend me. Heck yeah! I feel like that's what you do as a couple. You, like, defend your spouse or whatever because that's your main priority, not a friend that you met in freaking high school. Yeah. And even the the girlfriend, the fiancé, she, all she asks is they don't do that around her. Yeah. I still that's think not even a lot, you know? Like, I feel like you should defend me in private as well. Yeah. Like, within your friends. Heck yeah. I, I think, that not like, they're really racist. Like, that's really, really racist. The whole, like, mm-hmm. cotton picking thing, that's mm-hmm. messed up. That's, like, way over the line. Like, yeah. like way, way over the line. Honestly, the the biggest, and this is this is one is a hard one because, like, the biggest problem here isn't, uh, isn't a thing that you can resolve. It isn't something that OP can, can solve because it's a problem with her fiancé. Like, he fears losing his friends. But, like reality is those are not good friends yeah like she shouldn't really be fearing losing them they're not good friends if they have like a group chat where b can say things about op like that and the fiance be okay with it and try to excuse it and the friends don't even care that he said that like nah they're all toxic like get get the heck get them out Does, does anything change for you because he said that b was the one person that was nah. friends with him. Uh, you know what it is though, and this is something that like I feel like people hold on to, um, and I don't think it's healthy. But like I think like, pe- you saved me. So yeah, like, forever. Whole, exactly. I'm in your debt. Exactly, and like yeah, and but they were they were just in the moment of weakness and in a place where like they were low on the ground, and yeah, sometimes. From time to time, I can't say that everybody's horrible, but like sometimes they'll be like that person who wanted to be your friend. That's true, and 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 was a good friend mm-hmm. to you. But sometimes there are those who just happen to also be at a low point and to try not to be so so alone. Just kind of hitch the ride with you and hope like mm. that you two can kind of at least not be loners together, like uh, alone. Uh, yeah, <laughs> alone and be loners together more so. And and that doesn't mean that they're good people. It just means that they wanted to not be alone. I just know that high school is hard. It is hard. But that, I don't know. I, I feel like you don't hit yourself to somebody who's a better person. 
and don't and if if you start yeah. noticing that they're Some a bad person can serve you for a time and then yeah. they're no longer serving you exactly yeah make other friends make new friends like i, I myself have made new friends as i continue to grow up and get older i capped out just, making new friends a long time ago yeah. like i don't need <laughs> <laughs> you got your little circle and that's it <laughs> yeah i i don't know for me i keep making making more friends i think when you do make more friends do you start to realize like the positives and negatives of other people so like there's friend groups that i have that i'm like they're super positive and i like that and there's other friend groups that i can be a little more relaxed with and they're joking around a little more satire you know so like this guy just needs to expand his borders a little bit but i don't know yeah, that's hard so far his only friends are Oh, my racist group. <laughs> you know, a little racist group circle. Yeah, uh, OP, um, I would kind of sit down with that. Actually, that's a pretty good place to put it at. Like, OP, sit down with your, your fiancé. Um, uh, if your fiancé is even the type of person that's willing to listen to you, hey, I know you feel super, super comfortable with that group of friends, but reality is that they're pretty fudged up. <laughs> like, they're horrible people. Uh, I would appreciate it if we, you and I together can go out, make new friends, or or if you can go, you know, try to make some more new friends and expand and see what out there is. I out don't there. know if that's gonna help, just because I think that the bigger issue is that he doesn't stand up for his wife. So it doesn't matter yeah. if it's this group of people. It doesn't matter if it's coworkers. If it's mm. like he's just not someone that stands up for you, and that's yeah. it. He's definitely like hold though the yeah the, the fiance and um uh, if anything maybe what you guys can do also that if he's man enough and tough enough try to see if you can if he can go like around b's back with the other friend group and figure out if you guys can put a, a team together to kick b out of the group you know kind of like a little safety net you get what i'm saying overrule b and then throw him out you know? okay is that, not, is, that, is that not a good plan? I feel like it's mutiny? pretty good. Yeah, mutiny. Is that what it is? No, mutiny. Mutiny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's a pretty good plan there. Uh, but top comment here is, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Please don't marry a person who is not in your corner. While you may not need to be defended, you do need to be respected. And if your fiance doesn't care enough to defend you and and end his racist crap, he doesn't deserve you. Not the hole. And OP replied, you worded this beautifully. Thank you so much. This whole situation has been weighing on my mind and heart heavily. Another person just commented, The problem isn't the friend, it's your fiancé. The friend is an asshole, but your fiancé excuses it. Excusing it is the same as saying it himself. That's what, I'm, that's what I mean by, okay, you get rid of B, and then so yeah. what? He, your fiancé is still the person that's okay yeah. with people treating you like that. That's not changing. Yeah, I probably get a new mans or something yeah. i don't know put this one in the corner or something uh, mm -hmm. did you want that time all right ready for that story of the day mm -hmm. all right i th honestly i think this one's hilarious i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i i'm hilarious i think it's hilarious and i think i think uh i think you're gonna love it <laughs> am i the a-hole for ditching my girlfriend at a 5k because i wanted a better time my girlfriend 31 female and i 36 male have been together for about two years now we live together about 9 months ago, I picked up running as a hobby and I have since grown quite fond of it. I currently run an average of 25 miles a week. A few months ago, I decided I wanted to try a 5k or 10k and after some google searching, I found a 5k in my city that looked fun. I registered for it, paid the fee and decided to start training specifically for it. I mentioned it in passing to my girlfriend that night and she asked if she could come too. I was psyched about the idea of running a 5k with her and said yes but warned her that she would probably want to start training because I was going for a sub 27 minute time, which might be tough for a complete beginner. She said she would like to train with me, which again sounded fun. The next morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. for my run, as I usually do, but my girlfriend was not up for it and told me she'd go later. This continued for a week and then two weeks, and finally I managed to get her up once for a run. She was miserable the entire time and I basically didn't get any exercise. Last Friday, the day before the race, I asked if she was really up for it. She insisted she was. She then told me that she would just skip gallop it, like she used to do with her mile runs in middle school. I asked her to demonstrate <laughs> what a skip gallop was, and she showed me this bizarre sidestepping gallop, as if she had cast on her legs. I told her it seemed like a really inefficient way to run, but she insisted it always worked for her. Saturday was the day of the race, and right off the gate, she utilized her skip gallop strategy. Two minutes in, I realized that she was already completely gassed. 
She started asking me to wait so we could walk together. I apologized, told her I loved her, and left her behind to finish the race. I ended up with a time of 26.43, beating my goal. After the race, I tried calling her, but she wouldn't pick up. When I made my way back to the car, I realized that she had left me. I took her over home, and right when I walked in the door, I was met with cries shrieking about how I dished her. I tried to calm her down and explain that she kind of brought it on herself, but she was not interested whatsoever. Yesterday, she gave me the silent treatment all day. Do I deserve what I'm getting here? Am I the hijo? Dump her. Dump her? Is that what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about? Yeah. Like, like the like, little bunny? No, dump her. Oh, dump her. Okay. Thumper? Is that what I you thought I thought you said, said thumper. I was like, what? She's running like a thumper? Like the little bunny? I don't understand how she's running. I cannot even picture it. <laughs> Wait, you, would you think you're going to dump her over the way she runs? No. I would. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying dump her because she's giving you a silent treatment. Uh, she abandoned yeah. you in the, during she, the that race. That is kind of crazy. It's yeah, crazy. You dump her. Like, I don't know if I would dump her, to be honest, but she definitely is like those are kind childish. of a brat. Like, those are childish <laughs> behavior. I wish I could see her running though, dude, because I can't. I can't even imagine how it looks like. Like, okay, so the way they described it was that it's like she has like casts on her leg, mm -hmm. and when you have casts, that means you can't move them, right? You're like kind of, they're kind of stuck. You're like, they're like stiff. they're stiff, right? Like, uh -huh. let's say you had a cast here, you'd you had, you have to go like this, right? But that's if you have it over your knee. When you get a cast, you normally have it all over. I don't know. She's a broken legs. Mm. So like, you okay? Pretend this is my leg, right? You would have yeah. to run, so you'd have to run like like this. <laughs> is that what her gallop? Is that? <laughs> but he said side gallop. I don't know. Can we can we look up <laughs> that up real quick? What is a side gallop? I don't Bye. think anyone's gonna show us because I, I think she's a unique one running like that. I, uh, oh, side gallop technique. Yo, I don't know. It's it just I don't know. Oh it, wait, yeah. What is this? Side gallop. Oh, what the? Wait, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. I think I okay. I think I found it. Okay, it's a straight up skill. Like uh, yeah, yeah. Here, look. The side gallop. Body faces forward on our toes. Oh. Both feet off the ground together. She was. Straight ahead. She's like skipping, Moving side skipping. Smoothly. Yeah, she's side skipping, but. Both feet stay on the ground. Only okay, well, that's it. Ground. But like, uh, I okay. Uh, I don't think that's very good at all. I, I mean. If you skip forward, no. I feel like that's pretty fast. No, I can, dude, dude. I can skip forward pretty fast. <laughs> okay, but like the side count? Nah, no, she's okay. crazy to think that she could run like that without... 5K. Yeah, a 5K. 5K. And just in general, a 5K without any practice? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Of course you're going to be tired by two minutes. Yeah. I, th I think what it is too is I, maybe it's not her fault completely. Just because I've known people that fantasize the idea of being able to run a 5k easily mm. but so they're like they think like oh i've ran before like from here to i don't know like a few one time like i a ran block. a mile yeah there we go i could okay. i could it's, run a 5k yeah like exactly like I, I ran a mile back in eighth grade and yeah i'm pretty sure i can still run like i can run a 5k what is yeah. that just two two more miles or people whatever? don't understand like, like they're not conditioned like they don't realize yeah. that at a point that they ran that it was a long time ago, yeah. and they were able to recover faster, and you everything know, they more about energy. their body is different. Yeah, <laughs> but also like you gotta actually okay, one mile. Yeah, you could probably like muster up the energy to run yeah. one mile, but more than that, your body's gonna feel it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, she definitely it's kind of she was kind of dummy bear. And see, she's really selfish. Yeah. To this is something that he has been working hard for. Yeah. And he has a personal goal. And you want him to just walk it with you. Yeah. So, nah. like, I don't understand running in general. Why would anyone? Do you know you don't have to? Um, <laughs> what if a bear chases you? You got to practice with this kind of stuff. I told you I'm, I'm giving up. Well, I'm running for my life and I'm going to outrun that bear. No, you know what? You're going to save me because that bear is going to go after you. <laughs> think so? Is Probably, it? huh? Yeah. I think it's more fun to chase than to eat something that's dead yeah so. like how long has this been dead? No. <laughs> yeah oh, a little stinky too like, what's going on dude yeah. i'm not gonna outrun a bear and then what you climb a tree okay that bear is gonna climb the tree too like i 
I just don't. I'll figure something out. But my point is, you. I have gone with you to a 5K. Yeah. I definitely stood at the finish line. <laughs> you sure did. You sure <laughs> I'm did. not going to run that. No, I mean, that happened to my friend, too. Like, that 5K. Oh, man, I'm going to call you out, homie, if you're watching this right now. But, uh, like, that 5K, like, um, uh, the one of my homies that I actually used to run with a long time ago, he went to the 5K. And I don't know what his, like training regimen was mm -hmm. but as soon as we got there he's like yeah i'm gonna beat this time and i'm gonna be so you guys fast had and blah, like blah. it was like a group of five people i yeah. remember it and I, I hadn't met really any of them except yeah. one from high school and you guys were all oh what do you think you're gonna like hit, hit? realistically yeah. yeah and you guys were saying your numbers oh yeah. this is how much i've been training so i probably am not gonna do that good or you know yeah and he he had he said the fastest Bro, time and like I was, a, it wasn't even like a like a minute faster than everybody else it was like five ten minutes faster than yeah. everybody else and i'm like and to me i don't know man i just like i have like i'm always in your corner so yeah. i'm always like oscar's gonna be the best you know how it is <laughs> like I, that's always my confidence I'm yeah, like, yeah and and then he said his and i was like that's really below what you were you yeah, saying yeah yeah and well, the the perfect, uh, I guess karma hit pretty pretty quick because as soon as we took off, he stayed with me for like maybe like a little bit under a mile, and then he's like, "Yo, it's getting kind of hot out here," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, we're running in the sun, like yeah, it's you know." And he's like, "My feet kind of hurt a little bit," <laughs> and I'm like, "Dude, what? <laughs> like, we, you you told me you've been running for like months and training." Yeah. And then he's like, you know what, you know what, just go go ahead of me, because I was pacing with him, yeah. like I was running next to him. And then he he's like, just go ahead of me, and I'm just gonna catch up in a little bit. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. I never saw him again. <laughs> I literally did not see him again. Finished the race, and like we were kind of just like recording there for a little bit too. And I I don't know, I just never ended. I don't, I don't I'm not maybe he's still running to this day. I have no <laughs> idea. I just never saw him. No. So yeah, but um yeah, sometimes people you know chew a little more than they can eat yeah but like, okay back to the story why wouldn't she support him you know yeah. if you were gonna join him that's cool of you to say and then you were gonna practice with him you didn't yeah. you get there you know what uh, i bit off more than i could chew i said that one right i bit yeah, off did. more than i could chew you go ahead i'll walk this one you're gonna have to wait for me once yeah like you're done yeah yeah be, be that supportive she's like oh no he abandoned me right by leaving yeah. so i'm gonna abandon him or take the horse car <laughs> yeah take the horse okay. car and then silent treatment and then she was crying like it wasn't that big of a deal she was crying like yeah it wasn't that big of a deal crying i don't know what a cry shrieking is um uh, yeah. i can only assume it's uh i don't know like kind of like screaming maybe i don't know yeah like, but just it, a it's really probably high pitched. yeah crying. that's what i'm thinking yeah. But this is why I say, like, dump her just because she is a child. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say dump her, but she definitely is acting like a child in this situation. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even apologize, to be honest. I wouldn't tell her sorry. And I would actually ask her to, to apologize to she me. She gave me the silent treatment all day. That's enough for me to dump someone. Um, uh, she definitely is super selfish for trying to take over this whole thing and make it, make it about her yeah. instead of uh, keeping it about him. Um, but pops to Yopi, I ain't even a front, dude. You did. I, I don't know how long you've been running for. Uh, honestly, um, uh, it's been like a oh nine months ago. Okay, so you've been running for nine months. Um, uh, for somebody who's not running competitively, twenty seven minutes is pretty good, or sub twenty seven minutes is pretty good. Yeah. So good for you. Twenty six forty three. Dang man. Yeah, you did like twenty three that day. Yeah, I did twenty three, and I had only well, I I ran. I'm conditioned, you know. I've ran before. So I, no, I you see, you see, this is where I get annoyed <laughs> because we were just talking about how people yeah. like are no longer conditioned and they think well, they think about, are. And you, yeah, you were a runner. You ran in high school. You ran in college. Yeah. And then sometimes you still say things like I'm conditioned. I'm like, um, when's the last time you ran? Like months. Yeah, like yeah. you're not conditioned. Yeah, but like, I mean, the way when that I you think you are, when I I'm not conditioned to like be super super good, but like the five k ran. I had only ran for like two to three weeks mm -hmm. for practice, and I yeah. hit a twenty-three minute. This guy has been training for nine months. Yeah, like think about that. Yeah, you know? I get it. I get it. So I'm just am I the Flash? I don't know. I've heard that sometimes when I'm running around. Mm -hmm. Just hey, is that the Flash? Uh, yeah. What? Like you know, but um, uh, so maybe maybe. 
But um, uh, yeah, nonetheless, there that's a pretty good time. Uh, top comment here is not Daiko. She chose to invite herself. She chose to not prepare, and she chose to make a fool of herself with her crazy method of running. <laughs> Skip Gallop. This is all on your girlfriend. I'm glad you had your phone and or wallet and were able to get mm -hmm. home after she abandoned you. Honestly, depending how far away you lived from that 5K, that could have just been your cooldown. Yeah, you know? just ran it back home. Um. I just want to see the faces of the other people that saw her run like that. I did, <laughs> yes, that would be great. Like, like everybody's just like this, and she's like this sideways, just yeah. like about to start her side gallop. Like, what, what's yeah. going on there? No, when I, dude, people get kind of crazy. I was, um, uh, uh, when we were running to the 5K, I w we were like all piled up, right, to start at the starting line, whatever. And then I was looking around in people's shoes because I don't know, I just like seeing what people are wearing. And yeah, the usual like people have running shoes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Somebody was just gonna run in vans, and I'm like, dude, your legs are gonna be destroyed. Yeah, like bad. And there were people, some of them were like Jordans, like those are heavy shoes. Just like and I'm like, dude, uh, I don't know. Some people can just be really oblivious, to be honest, to what they're doing. You might as well just go in chunkless like the head. <laughs> yeah. And then here's another comment here just to, to end mm -hmm. it off here. But they said, not that cool. She asked to come, refused to train, knew you had a goal in mind, and then still made it about herself. Why are you with someone who acts like a child? Yeah. She does act like a child. I'm not going to lie there. But um, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't break up just yet. I don't, I don't feel like that's enough for me to break up with someone. But she definitely is super selfish. And you know, I don't like that. I'm going to call you out real quick. Dang. All right. Go ahead. What's you, up? you made me look bad yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been holding on to that? <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, I'm always in your corner cheering for you. Yeah. And we had um friends come over, a couple. Yeah. And I don't know why you who brought I think he brought it up to just yeah. go on the a race. quick sprint. Yeah. And to race you and i was on your corner i was cheering yeah. for you my friend was in your corner cheering for you yeah and he you you got smoked yeah well gotta lose sometimes gotta make a gotta gotta keep other people's self-esteem up sometimes you know they don't want to like make him look bad you know no you honestly, made me look bad. <laughs> honestly i'm just not i'm not a good like runner when it comes to running fast i'm not like i'm like, horrible i've never been a good sprinter i'm not a good sprinter whatsoever even in, in college and high think school this is information that should have been shared with me I before probably, i feel like i have i've told you this countless of times but like even in high school okay, okay like, hold in up, college, I'm sorry. I, before i forget right mm -hmm. before i forget okay we were a little trend yesterday right <laughs> <A> little. <laughs> and i stopped myself but i was this close to when casey like asked for a race against you yeah <laughs> I don't know. What Were you going to bet? Yes. Were you going to put money down? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> That's how turnt you were that you were going to wage your money. Am I a horse to you? <laughs> I'm just like, that's what you do with like those racing horses. <laughs> you just Dude, wage your money. I was about to say, I was, okay, my initial thought, I was like, bet $500. And then, and then in my head, I was like, well, what am I saying? Bet $100. And, and then. I had something shun light on me and yeah. I was like just just stop don't say anything <laughs> yeah I'm so it's, happy, I'm so did. happy you, you, yeah you didn't say nothing <laughs> no I wouldn't have bad money on me to be honest that's so much money I mean not money but that's, that, that, that's yeah that's so much that money, is so much money. Okay, that's so much money but also like I'm not I'm not I'm not confident in myself when it comes to sprinting. well I was yeah well at least I, I beat him in the told. second one the comeback race the yeah. second one I got I, I beat him that yeah. one got revenge yeah it's just it, put a little more de distance and i can i'll, I'll take on anybody up. yeah i get that second win you know um but yeah i'm happy you didn't bet <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and uh let us know if you like this kind of format more and uh we are aiming to kind of uh like, you know do a little bit of changes here and there uh submit your stories on the form description you know link below and also we're just extending the episode to be a little longer i think this one was you know, on the little longer side. So let us know if you like that. And um, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, oh, have a great day. Great week. <laughs> great month. Great year. Great life. Just great everything. But yeah, see you in the next one. Later. Bye.
Anybody who's new, who's looking at this video for the first time, subscribe, bro. Join us in this crazy neighborhood of ours and, uh, you know, just have some fun, silly times with us. Hear some Reddit stories and let's see where the heck this goes. We'll see you in the next one. Laters.